Well, flowers and candles mark the intersection where a beloved senior was struck and killed by a pickup truck last week. 69 year old Jay Blue was on her way to exercise class that day. At this point, it's unclear if she actually pressed that button and these lights were flashing when that truck made a left hand turn. What we do know is that she was struck down right here in the middle of these zebra stripes. Now tonight we're learning that this intersection has been flagged uh, by the neighborhood and the city councilor here as a safety hazard several times. Yet the request for uh, proper traffic lights to be installed here was rejected by the city. I think most of her life was just random acts of kindness for people, whether it was knitting a blanket for someone who had a new baby, whether it was giving treats, whether it was sharing recipes. Um, I mean, the, the day that this tragedy happened, the, the house was left like she was just going for a short walk and we came back and it was just a table full of presents, gifts and cards that she was just working on to send out. Scott and Brian are still in shock over the sudden and tragic death of their beloved mother. Jay Blue was such a friendly face in this neighborhood. Not one, but two memorials have popped up at the intersection where she lost her life here at Cosburn in Cedarvale. Tonight we're learning this neighborhood has been sounding the alarm bells over safety issues at this intersection for several years now. What happens is they don't they're so focused on the light up front still being green that they don't realize that the lights are flashing or that there's pedestrians ready to cross. It should be a set of lights just to help. There's so many kids and elderly in this neighborhood and um, the, the crosswalk is just too dangerous for, for them to cross. A traffic study was conducted here back in 2014, but the city rejected a request for the installation of proper traffic lights. But it hasn't met what they call the technical warrants. It hasn't met the criteria. And, you know, I don't think that criteria adequately assesses the conditions around surrounding an intersection like this is an arena, a school, a community center, a park, a dog park, a skate park. This is a very busy intersection. Councillor Janet Davis says traffic studies are only conducted every three years and they look at a number of factors such as the amount and flow of traffic, how many pedestrians cross a day and how many accidents there are in a specific area. And you said that one of the reasons why this didn't meet the criteria is that this crosswalk just happens to be too close to the traffic lights just down there. Yes, one of the criteria is that they have to be 200 meters separation distance and this is 135. Uh, meters and I think 135 meters versus 200 should not be the factor that determines whether people are safe crossing this street. As Scott and Brian prepare for their mother's funeral on Friday, they tell me they will be helping this neighborhood to pressure the city to put safety first. I think that it's something that maybe the city of Toronto should review the standards that they're applying to evaluate these these intersections and these crosswalks and maybe take a more up to date case by case approach. Whatever they got to do so that other people don't have to feel what we're feeling right now is justified in my eyes. Now, another traffic study is currently underway on this intersection, and Councillor Davis is hoping to get that report onto uh, the agenda at the East York Community Council in February. Ultimately, though, she says any decisions made on whether or not uh, traffic lights will be installed here will be up to full council. Now, Blue's family reached out to us to highlight this safety concern. If you have a news tip or a concern you want us to look into, here's how you can reach us.